All right, hey guys. Hope everybody's doing well. Uh, picking up kind of where we left off. We're talking about descriptive statistics, tables, graphs, and numbers. Uh, we just talked about frequency distribution tables, which are about how many times something happens. Uh, next, we're gonna and, and what we did was uh, use the table to try to see the data um, and kind of get an idea for um, what our customers like, uh, what the data look like. Um, what we're gonna talk about next is two ways to visualize that data. So two visualizations. Um, these are two of the most common and there are lots of data visualizations that are available. Uh, people create new ones every day, right? If you've ever used like Wordle or you know, there's cool stuff out there, but, but these are famous and, and uh, long-standing uh, for reasons. The first one we're going to look at is a bar chart <coughs> and the second one uh, we're going to look at is a pie chart. And these are, are both super useful. So, what is a bar chart? Well, a bar chart um, is just a chart that has two axes and it helps us kind of see the data in a particular way. So, let's draw these up here. A uh, bar chart has a vertical axis, and here we have some measure of. Uh, can I write sideways? I don't know if I can manage this. The frequency. Wow, look at that. Could probably just turn my tablet sideways. Um, frequency. There we go. Not bad. And then on the horizontal, we have categories. <clears throat> uh, and what we just did was uh, we looked at a taco stand, right? We looked at a taco stand that had uh, beef tacos, and it had chicken tacos, and it had fish tacos. And I had tofu tacos. Um, and they would be pretty easy to make a bar chart for this, right? We could say, okay, uh, our data was up here. Our data were up here. 5, 12, 2, and 11. Getting these from right here. That was how, how frequently people uh, request those tacos. 5, 12, 2, and 11. And so we could say, okay, let's let the top be 15. Uh, that would put 10 somewhere like here. And 5 somewhere like here. Well, beef tops off there. 12 for chicken tops off like right here. Fish tops off at 2. That was not very much. And tofu is at like 11. And then we just draw vertical lines here, which are really hard to do with a tablet, but I'll do what I can. And we have a bar chart that looks something like this. Now, you can take some time with the ruler, do the thing right. Um, but Excel makes it very easy to draw these. There are lots of, lots of software packages out there that make it easy to make bar charts. Uh, you could even do it with like Illustrator or Word, um, since you can measure the height of things. Uh, just make sure they're proportional. Uh, but the easy way to do it is to have something like this that already has a table. And then insert a bar chart. <coughs> what we're going to do is we're going to select our categories and our frequencies. Right, filling in frequency. Um, and we go to insert. Uh, and I don't actually want to make a bar chart because bar charts are column charts. Um, I want to insert a column chart. They say bar charts are the best chart type for comparing multiple values. Uh, I'm going to make a 2D column. Um, and the way that these usually start, I don't really like them. Um, but it's a straightforward bar chart. It's totally simple to do, right? It just automatically labels things. That's nice. Uh, since we only have one column, one type of column, we don't really need a legend. So I'm just going to delete that. Uh, and I don't want the title really to be frequency. What I really want is for this axis to be labeled. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to layout, axis titles, vertical axis title, rotated title, and I'm going to rename this frequency. That allows me to change the title at the top to taco fillings. There we go. Now we have a bar chart that has all the stuff we want. Um, it's still a little big for me, uh, so let's make it a little bit smaller. And now we can copy and paste it and put it wherever we want, right? I, can, I think what I'm going to do is maybe paste it over the one that I just made since it was kind of ugly. Uh, maybe we'll put it next to it so you can see the difference. Okay, so before and after. <laughs> so yeah, so bar charts are really easy to make. Um, and they're very useful, right? Uh, before, when you had to look at the numbers, uh, you had to compare them all. Now you can just look at it very quickly with your eye and see the chicken is the tallest, right? So that's where most of our, or the plurality of our customers prefer, um, whereas fish is, is the least uh, least frequently ordered. Um, it's very useful. 
Okay, you could also make this bar chart instead of having frequency on the left side, you can make it with relative or percentage frequencies, which I talked about in the last video a little bit. The bars wouldn't actually change in height relative to each other, but the scale on this vertical axis would, right? So uh, it would be, you know, up to 100 or whatever. In this case, it would be up to 50% because there were 30 total tacos. So this top would say 50%, and then this would be at 40% or whatever, right? And that would be how that would work out. Um, yeah, okay. So. The downside of putting like relative is relative frequency there is that you lose some information about the frequency. And the other thing is that usually if you're interested in percentages, the reason is that you want to compare the share of things. And so uh, bar charts are great for um, comparing frequencies, comparing values. Oops, I think I'm selecting. I'm not selecting. Comparing values. But if you want to compare shares, then uh, the pie chart is really where you want to go. Right, so let's uh, squiggly down here. Comparing shares. I just reminded of Bill Cosby's picture pages. I wonder, there's got to be some of those on the internet. Anyway, <laughs> pie charts. Let's see. Uh, pie chart. A pie chart is a circle. There, that's a circle, and it has sections. Right? They're supposed to be meet in the middle. This is a little asymmetrical, right? And these sections have percentages in them, right? So uh, what what they would do is they usually they're different colors, and the size of the section is proportional to the share of that category. And that's how it works. In this case, I have one, two, three, four, five sections. It makes it very easy to tell when the circle is drawn to scale that, for example, this one is the largest and this one is the smallest. My pie chart is not uh, super uh, symmetrical. Uh, in order to do this by hand, you'd need a compass and you'd need a, a you know, a protractor, um, but you could do it. You cut the degrees of the circle. You know, there are 360 degrees in a circle, and so you kind of use that 360 degrees and then take the percentage of that, right? So if you had something that's 40%, uh, it's going to be 4 times 36, which is 144, 144 degrees of the circle would be devoted to the 40% slice. Um, and then you just draw a line across the circle. It cuts it, you know, you meet them in the middle, and then you have a slice, right? You have like a little pizza slice. Um, it's really easy to do this again in Excel and, and other stuff. So um, the easiest way to work with this is with our relative frequencies. We calculated those last time. Uh, so we have our relative frequencies already calculated. Let me use, uh, sorry, I want to use the, the unfinished one relative frequencies right here. Uh, what we want to do though is we want to keep our labels and so what we can do is you can select if you just click and drag and then try to click and drag something else it unselects but if you hold control when well, you click and drag again it'll select both things. Now we have two uh, disjoint um, columns, disjoint sets that are all both selected. Once we do that then we can insert our chart. Uh, hold on, let me move this down. Insert chart, pie chart, 2D pie. And there we go, we have our chart. I'm going to cover up the bar chart we just made uh, to give us some space. Um, but I don't really like the way that that looks. I mean, it's perfectly acceptable, um, but there are a few things that I, I don't uh, love about it. Um, I don't like the labels, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to layout, data labels, more data label options. I want my data labels to be on the inside. I want them to be percentages. Right There you go, see, that looks a lot nicer. I want them to have the category names. Um, and where I want them is ins on the inside end. <coughs> That's just how I like it to look. Okay. Um, other stuff. Well, if I'm going to be printing this in grayscale, like it looks real nice right now. Um, but if I'm going to print this for like a class or for a black and white report, uh, one way to do that is to change the design. You can easily do that. Um, I like it to still be in color, and I know that if I select colors carefully, then I can uh, I can do some nice things with it. So, I can um, format data point. Is that how it works? Fill color. Yeah. So I'm going to choose. Let's say I'll choose a lighter one for beef, maybe a little bit lighter, uh, an even lighter one for tofu, but I want it to be like here maybe, and then for fish it's going to be like almost transparent. It could even be white, that would be fine, right? 
Um, but I'll keep with it like a real light green. Now when I print this, the chicken will be dark, the beef will be less dark, the tofu will be lighter, and the fish will be the lightest. Um, but uh, but it will be in, the grayscale will work fine. Other stuff that I want to do here, I don't really like the I don't need the legend anymore. So we can delete that, and I don't really like the the label to be here. Um, you can put the chart title centered overlay, and that really just lets you move it around wherever you want. So again, I'm going to call this taco fillings, and then I'm going to drag it somewhere else so that it's not in the way. There we go. In fact, I'm going to want to make this smaller. So let's make it uh, like that. And then when we go like that, there we go. Look at that. Look at that. Now when I copy and paste that here, it'll fit nicely and look good. Right, so that's a pie chart. Looking at that, we can very easily see that the, you know, the chicken... Chicken and tofu together make up, you can do the math real fast, 77% of our customers. Um, beef and fish uh, are really picking up the, the last little bits. Um, and these, these numbers are not exact, right? We calculated these earlier. Um, and this is like, uh, was that 6.6666666? And this is um, 16.66666, whatever, 36.666. And so there, there's some rounding that goes into that. But, um, but voila, right? So now we have two visualizations. We have, I'll move them closer together so you can see them kind of right next to each other. We have a bar chart, which gives us one way of looking at it. It shows us our frequencies. And then we have our pie chart, which shows us our percentages. And those are two of the most common and easiest visualizations. Um, they're both pretty easy to do in Excel. Uh, if you have any questions, or if you, you know, feel free to watch the video again, um, or feel free to get in touch with me. Uh, you can send me a message or a comment or shoot me an email if you know my email address. I don't remember if it's listed. Anyway, hope this has been useful for you, um, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.